post-sentient floor design using the European code EC2. The European code to start with is referenced at the bottom here. Its uh, latest edition is in 2004 and it is often referred to as EC2. Now, what is your takeaway from this presentation? You will learn the application of uh, European code for design of column supported post sentient floors. EC2 covers both conventionally reinforced and post sentient members in building construction, but here we focus on post sentient. The presentation follows the step by step design floor as you would be following if you were designing a post-sentient floor. The code is very complex compared to ACI 318. To navigate through the code is not simple for the first user, but I hope this presentation and the step-by-step -step outline of what you need to do will simplify it uh, uh, for you. EC2 covers three steps, very much like ACI and other codes. It has a serviceability check, then it has a safety check designed for safety, and it concludes with the initial condition at transfer of uh, pre-stressing at uh, checking. First, you go through the serviceability condition and if it works, it is satisfied, you go to the safety. Now, what is very important in EC2, it permits cracking in service condition. Permits cracking, but crack with must be uh, controlled, not to exceed a certain value as we will be discussing uh, shortly. For each design, you will have a design crack width, which depends on the exposure of the member to corrosive elements and also the post tensioning used, whether bonded or unbonded, and as well as application of the member. The crack control in EC2 is based on the magnitude of a, an extreme fiber tension stress. The initiation of cracking, in other words, there is a threshold whether cracking is probable to start or not, that initiation is governed by extreme fiber tension stress that we will be discussing. The design of the crack width, computation of the crack width, and the consequence of it is also based on this extreme fiber tension stress, representative stress, or fictitious stress, as we will be discussing it. The computation of this stress comes up in the following slides and is based on the assumption that response of the member to load is linear elastic. Even in the post cracking evaluation of the member, you assume a linear elastic and you assume cross-sectional area, full cross-sectional area, gross uh, cross-sectional area. <laughs> and you use those to calculate an extreme fiber 
stress which is used as threshold whether you have cracking or not for beam and one-way slabs it is simple you use the standard beam formula for both pre and post cracking condition using uncracked properties of the section this formula this is the common formula for stress cancellation at uh, extreme fiber C being the extreme fiber embedding moment and so on that is the standard formula in the books now when it comes to column supported slabs like the example I have at the bottom left the threshold is uh, based on extreme fiber representative stress as I will discuss uh, you will break the slab into strips in one direction strips in the other direction each strip is uh, that is by the way is uh, described in appendix I of the code each strip is uh, assumed to carry the load that falls on it and uh, you calculate the bending moment and shear etc on each strip and as I will discuss shortly you calculate a strip a stress you can use a strip method or finite element uh, method each strip is looked in isolation when it comes to stress calculation for example if this is one strip it is broken down into design sections and at each design section uh, which uh, you will have a distribution of uh, bending moment and axial force as uh, shown here you calculate the integral of the action say moment and axial and these values are the integrals and uh, you apply that integral to the cross-sectional area of this section and you calculate a stress now going to appendix I of EC2 it suggests first it recognizes so does ACI that the distribution of stress is going to be such as shown here higher over the column less away from the column appendix I has in it that this distribution can be substituted by an area as I have shown here a higher column strip and a lower middle strip and then comes up with certain values but but and it concludes from this stepped calculation with a single one representative stress calculated for each design section the figure shows the distribution EC2 uh, recommends in, in appendix I to compute one stress now the reference at the end of this presentation shows that the computation of the representative value in EC2 for code compliance can be greatly simplified it is not necessary to break the distribution into the stepwise shown here you can based on the code in appendix I 
take the entire integral, the entire area in this curve, apply it to the entire cross-sectional area of the strip, multiply the value by 1.3, which is obviously much simpler than the breakdown into mid, mid, middle strip and the model and the column strip. It will make it look exactly like ACI. Take the entire integral, apply it to the entire cross-section, multiply it by 1.3 to be called to be EC2 code compliant. In ACI, you don't have this multiplied by 1.3. But the allowable stresses are uh, different. Now, this simple procedure is uh, in, uh, from Appendix I simplifies the uh, computation greatly. Now, is C2 design is based on crack with first formation of cracking and if crack is likely to form it is acceptable if it is within the limits of the assumed design but you have to remedy you have to come up with some remedy which i will uh, discuss uh, EC2 allows crack with in service condition and depending on whether you use unbonded or bonded and uh, depending on the exposure whether it is not exposed to extreme weather or exposed there are different allowable values so if cracking is calculated and is less than the width given here you take no steps no remedial measures otherwise you have to take some steps which I will discuss now going to load combinations in service condition not the entire design load applies at all times the fraction of the load which is considered to be applicable commonly depends on the occupancy whether it is dwelling office shopping center storage etc these are the fractions assumed and you use in design these fractions to determine the formation of cracking in service condition that is how it is done so for serviceability check you will have load combinations one of them is called the characteristic which is very much in ACI terminology it's called total and then the other one is sustained which is in is a quasi permanent which in terminology of ACI is called sustained load combination so you use both of them and the initiation of cracking is uh, tested in a quasi uh, permanent in so to say frequent load combination now for serviceability design you calculate the extreme fiber tension stress which is uh, application of the integral of distribution of axial and uh, moment applied to the entire cross section and you get a single representative stress which is used to determine whether cracking is likely to take place or not if it is less than the threshold then essentially the serviceability is met and the threshold is this value here 
this uh, uh, extreme fiber stress will uh, define whether the cracking is probable to take place or not. There is also an extreme fiber for compression, which is primarily used to see whether uh, there will be increase in deflection due to creep of concrete, and that has this stress threshold, which uh, I have here, and I have noted it in the flowchart that uh, concludes. There are three flowcharts I have prepared. The first one is uh, the most common one. It checks the probability of crack form formation, and if there is no probability, then you're essentially done. Then there's a second flow chart that if the first one fails and the cracking is likely to occur, you check whether it is uh, within the limits or not, and whether you have to take measures like applying uh, a putting rebar and so on. And then you also check the compression stress. And if the compression stress exceeds a certain level, then you go to third flowchart to check deflection allowing for creep. This is how it uh, works. And now the following flowcharts will explain uh, flowcharts A, B, and C. Uh, the navigation is uh, governed by representative extreme fiber tension, tensile stress. And uh, as I mentioned, you essentially assume past if uh, you do not exceed the extreme fiber threshold. Otherwise, you have to go to other uh, flow charts. This is all it says here and then uh, as I mentioned before if uh, compression stress exceeds a certain uh, value you go to allowance for it in uh, deflection this is the uh, flow chart A which of uh, creep the encircled numbers refer to explanation for each of these uh, boxed uh, items at, in the reference at the end of this uh, uh, presentation. Now, the objective of this flowchart is to see whether you, uh, the likelihood of uh, cracking is there or not. And then C is really the focus of this flowchart is uh, on deflection allowing for creep and also if rather than uh, putting rebar once the formation of crack in prior flow charts is detected you would engage in calculating the crack width and then see whether it's allowable or not. Crack width calculation is explained in the code. It is somewhat uh, uh, involved and in the reference at the end of this uh, presentation, it goes through examples of uh, calculation uh, also, when you come next, you go. Uh, you come to safety condition after serviceability is uh, uh, satisfied. The load combination, the common load combination for safety, is as given here: AC 
like ACI, hyperstatic actions from post-tensioning are required to be calculated and included with factor 1. Again, this is based on the assumption that you are using the load balancing method of design. That is why you have the hyperstatic here explicitly and it is included with a factor of uh, 1. EC2 recognizes that at the strength limit state, uh, the stresses in post-tensioning will be increased. The, in service condition, you are somewhere around here. Uh, just around 1000 this is the level the service level and in safety level ec2 allows you to go as far as yield if you're using bonded if you use unbonded only 100 megapascal is allowed as increase in tendon stress at ultimate uh, limit state but for bonded tendons you essentially you allow a higher value essentially as far as the yield is concerned there's a big difference uh, between bonded and unbonded compared to ACI the contribution of unbonded tendons to the strength of a member is much less of that compared to bonded tendons. In the general case, bonded tendons, the computed allowable stress for the common condition is much larger than what is recommended in ACI. So in comparison to ACI, bonded tendons are much more preferred in terms of uh, allowable uh, values. Next, you have to check for cracking moment and safety. That is after you are done with uh, service condition and strength uh, condition. Cracking under bending stresses. The section under bending develops tension and if tension at the bottom exceeds a certain value there will be cracking cracking eliminates the contribution of concrete in tensile zone so there is a drop in capacity ACI and the EC2 uh, wants to make sure that at a cracking the resistance of the member exceeds the moment which caused the cracking and that the capacity has a safety factor of 1.15 in other words the capacity is at least 1.15 times the moment that caused the cracking at initiation of uh, cracking. EC2 is not explicit on the application to the floor slabs, nor does it uh, specify how to uh, calculate. The Presentation, presentation 16 of this series gives a full account of a cracking moment and its uh, application. ACI is also not very clear cut on application and computation. Next is punching shear. EC2 requires the calculation of a punching shear stress for a perimeter as shown here depending on the configuration 
ones at the face of the member column and next at the critical section shown and at similar sections beyond the uh, critical. The computed force demand consists of axial force and an allowance for moments, not the magnitude of the moment. This is very important. The magnitude of the moment and whether it is one way or two way doesn't matter. It is the presence of the moment. The presence of the moment results in increase of the calculated stress by 15% for interior columns and 50% for exterior columns irrespective of whether uniaxial or biaxial. EC2 does not provide any information for detailing of the member of a post tension member. In one of the presentations in this series, there are detailed uh, re recommendations on uh, detailing again. EC2 requires a minimum amount of reinforcement at each section. This correlates closely to the minimum pre-compression in ACI. Rather than minimum pre-compression, EC2 requires minimum area of reinforcement. And the minimum area is given in the flowchart A that we just uh, uh, covered. Also, EC2 requires that the sum of cross-sectional area of non-pre-stressed and pre-stressed reinforcement not to exceed a permissible value. Now, there is a minimum area and this is the maximum area. And this maximum area recognizes that post-sensioning could be treated differently than none uh, pre-stressed. So minimum and maximum, ACI only has minimum, doesn't have a maximum. In short, EC2 stimulates both minimum and maximum allowables. For detailing, in addition to whatever is required by calculation, reinforcement is necessary to make sure that in service condition the member performs well. Some of the reinforcement is behind the anchors for dispersion of compression and tensile concentration of force. This is generally provided by the supplier of uh, post-tensioning tendon. Other reinforcement is often shown on the construction drawings. There must be obviously reinforcement to keep the tendon in the profile given in design and some reinforcement for potential of uh, to minimize the adverse effect of uh, potential of uh, cracking where cracking might be unavoidable due to geometry and the layout of uh, tendons. Examples are given in presentation 30 of this uh, series. The last you go through the initial condition which is application of uh, post-sensioning at transfer of pre-stressing force. At that condition uh, you use a 
load combination like what I have here. It is not from EC2. EC2 does not define the load combination, but uh, common, the most engineers use self weight and one on a 1.15 post uh, tensioning. If the stresses exceed the tensile value permitted in EC2, you calculate the tensile force within the tensile zone of the section. This is the depth of the section and this is the tensile zone of the sec section. This is the tensile force, tensile force, and then you this is the allowable stress. If tension exceeds this, uh, you will calculate the force and you will uh, provide for this force with the rebar. You take rebar with 60% of its uh, yield stress to resist this tensile force. Somewhat similar to ACI. If a compression stress exceeds, you pause, you wait. You wait until the concrete reaches required strength and then you continue. The allowable value for compression is given here depending on the member whether it is simply supported or it is otherwise. These are the permissible uh, values. So in summary the European I provided you with the uh, presented the uh, overview of the European code emphasized that the design is based on crack control. The crack control is uh, carried out using a stress value, a representative stress value, which is related to breaking the floor into design strips and you have a design crack width that you select depending on the exposure of the member and application of the member. Talked about the load combination for service condition and the serviceability check. Then uh, talked about strength check load combination of strength check. We talked about contribution of post tensioning uh, to safety. Also the cracking moment that at initiation of cracking there has to be adequate uh, strength. Then talked about punching shear and uh, detailing. Subsequent to that I talked about the initial condition again control of stress at stressing of a member you can add rebar if tension stresses exceed but you pause and wait if compression stresses exceed the presentation information was uh, taken from a chapter of this uh, reference thank you for listening.